The ocean tends to be off of the radar screen for a lot of people. It's out there away from the coast. You know, most people's experience, if you ask them, what do you know about the ocean? They immediately start talking about their coastline, right? Well, the ocean's much bigger than that. One of the things I work on is how the chemistry of the ocean is changing over time. Normally how all this work's been done so far is scientists go out into the field and they'll select an organism, grab it, bring it back to the lab. And what we're doing that nobody's done before is we're taking our lab into the field. We drill coral cores and that's how we examine variability in the climate system. This is a four meter long coral core, and this one goes back uh, several centuries. And as you work your way over, we go back through the entire 1800s, and all the way back down to the bottom, this coral started growing in the year 1692. Yeah, it's the history of the world right there. It's a library, it's a book of climate change. But we always ask the question, what drives these changes? We used to think of other explanations, but we keep getting focused back on carbon dioxide as the prime variable. What's happened is, unfortunately, nature has been cooperating with theory, and the prediction of warming is taking place at least as fast as it was suggested, and faster in many cases. The buildup of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases is higher than was predicted. Every time we see an increase in CO2 content of the ocean, that surface water becomes a little bit more acidic and it affects organisms that live there. The temperature and the acidification are gonna to work together. The two acting in concert, you know, is this kind of knockout one-two punch. My hope for a meeting like Copenhagen is that the oceans appear more prominently on the list of things we should be worried about and the list of things that we should be examining. Copenhagen is close to the last ditched effort that we have for the planet to get together while there's still some time to avoid really dangerous consequences. If you want to know where we are in this ongoing experiment, where are we in this pathway into the world of the future, you have to know the temperature of the ocean. See you in Copenhagen. <laughs>